A violent start to the weekend in Indianapolis. Now on daybreak, the latest in three separate shootings that left two people dead and several more hurt. Most places are dry right now, but it may not stay that way. The Storm Track 8 team is here with certified most accurate forecast. Months of waiting for Manning's statue are over. Peyton Manning's permanent fixture has finally been unveiled. We'll take you to the ceremony. Now, live from Wish TV, this is 24 Hour News 8's Daybreak. Thank you so much for waking up with us here on Daybreak on this Sunday. I'm Drew Blair. I'll get to all your headlines in just a moment on this October 8th. But first, we've got to start with that forecast. It's noticeably cooler out there. Yeah. Thanks to that rain last night, Marcus. Yeah, some beneficial stuff. And thanks to the rain, Drew. Good morning to you. We also have a little bit of fog that has developed. It's not here in Indy. Visibility is refined around the metro area, but if your travels or if you live uh, west of the city, you are starting to see some patchy dense fog developing specifically. It looks like in portions of Putnam County, Owen County, Clay County, even over towards Vigo County as well. Uh, we'll check in down in Bloomington. You can see that it's showing some lower visibilities down toward Monroe County. And that is a little bit, I would say, more hazy look than what we showed an hour ago. Uh, so, yeah, certainly seeing some fog. And certainly when you get off the campus of IU or you get out of town in Bloomington, you probably see that fog thicken up a little bit. Just be aware of that. It's probably going to hang around for the next couple of hours or so. You can see on the northwest side of Indianapolis, no problems right now with the visibility. 57 degrees, very light wind out of the south at 3 miles per hour. We're as low as 52 in Lafayette. Good morning to you. 58 Muncie in Richmond and 50. 55 currently in Columbus. Numbers a little bit cooler than yesterday. We did tap out, uh, uh, top out rather, at 85 degrees yesterday afternoon. We're going to be a little bit cooler. We'll go up to about a high of 77 this afternoon. That is still well above average. 68 is normal for this time of year. And by the way, our average lows should be into the mid 40s. We are obviously nowhere near that this morning, despite being cooler than we have the past couple of mornings. Quick update on Tropical Storm Nate. This did make landfall overnight as a Category 1 hurricane right at the mouth of the Mississippi River uh, and now is tracking to the north and east. Sustained winds of 70, mile, 70 miles per hour and 85 mile per hour wind gusts. You can see the circulation here in southwestern portions of Alabama, but the rain now starting to separate from that parent circulation. This is going to play a role in our forecast. Cold front that brought the rain yesterday pulling away but this rain will continue to move in from the south and for portions of central Indiana that will mean some rain later this afternoon. So coming up, we'll talk about the impacts from Nate for your Sunday. We do have more rain chances looking ahead to the work week and also a slight, not a big, but a slight cool down coming. We'll break it all down coming in my eight day forecast in just a few minutes. See you then, Marcus. Okay. Two minutes after seven o'clock now new this morning in Crime Watch 8. A teenager's birthday party became a crime scene overnight. Police say someone drove by firing shots and hurting three young victims. It happened just before 11 last night near 38th Street and Lafayette Road. 24 News 8's Julia Dang joins us live at IMPD headquarters with the latest. Julia. Drew, not a lot of details yet in this shooting investigation. There is no suspect information, no information about a possible getaway car either. Now, it happened, like you said, just before 11 o'clock last night, and there was actually a birthday party, party going on at that venue. It was for a 13-year-old. Three people were shot in the parking lot outside, a 14-year-old boy, a 13-year-old girl, and a 16-year-old boy. At least one of them did require surgery, but authorities tell us they are all in good condition. It's still unclear who is behind this shooting and why they opened fire on those teenagers. You know, we don't know how old the, the people that did the shooting are, but, you know, we're seeing more and more juveniles get shot. You know, when I grew up, we settled differences with fists and, and things like that. And I think this younger generation's quick to grab guns. Again, this happened outside the Royal Palace Event Center. That's near 38th and Lafayette Road. Anybody with information is urged to come forward. At this hour, authorities are still trying to talk to parents and other witnesses who were there. Again, anybody with information can help in this investigation. Fernando, back to you in the studio. Julia Dang, thank you. At three minutes after seven o'clock, we have just learned new information in the last 30 minutes about one of two separate deadly shootings on the east side. 
Police say a woman died around 10 last night at a home on 16th Street near Ritter Avenue. Police say a man in the home had been shot as well. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators say they believe one of the two people may have shot the other. They did not go into detail. Police have not released the names of either person. Minutes later, police say a man in his 20s was found shot to death in a car near 38th and Post. No suspect information has been released in that shooting. If you know anything, call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. One person died and another is severely hurt after a serious crash on the southeast side of Indianapolis. It happened just after 515 yesterday afternoon on Southeastern Avenue near Five Points Road. Police say one person died at the scene and another is in critical condition. We still don't know specifics about the crash, but we'll keep you updated as we learn more. Salute to Peyton is presented by Bill Estes Automotive Group. Well, number 18 is back in the Circle City. The festivities for Peyton Manning started yesterday afternoon at Lucas Oil Stadium. Several celebrities and hundreds of fans flocked to the house that Peyton built for the unveiling of his bronze statue. Our Megan McEwen was among them. Of course, there's still so much more happening today in honor of Peyton Manning. The Colts take on the San Francisco 49ers at 1 this afternoon. Manning's number 18 jersey will be officially retired during the game. Among those in attendance for that jersey retirement will be Vice President Mike Pence. Pence arrived in Indianapolis last night after a visit to Las Vegas. He will also take part in the Mayor's Faith Initiative Unity Prayer Walk today. After the game, Pence is scheduled to fly out to California for a tax reform and space council event. It is 7.07 and our Peyton coverage doesn't stop here. Charlie Clifford has more on the weekend's sports headlines. Crime Watch 8, police are investigating a deadly shooting on the near north side of Indianapolis. It happened yesterday evening on West 28th Street, a couple blocks from MLK Street. IMPD says the victim is a man in his early 20s. Investigators say the shooting is not believed to be random. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers at 317-262-TIPS. And Fishers, we know more about the circumstances around the shooting of an 18-year-old. Police arrested three teenagers who say... You're watching Wish TV with news around the clock, online, on air, and on the go. Now, 24-hour News 8's Daybreak continues. Welcome back to Daybreak. We are approaching there, 7.30, right on the dot. And we are looking live in Shelbyville right now. I'm told the horses have been in action. So oh, yeah. I'm watching closely for one to come into view. <laughs> they must be on the back stretch. So Indiana Grand there waking up in Shelbyville. Good morning to all of you there and across central Indiana. So glad you you're tuning in this morning. Dun, 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 dun. There they are. Awesome. And down the stretch they come. <laughs> All right, so they're, they're awake and moving. <laughs> I bet they're loving this weather, though. This is good. This is good stuff oh, for yeah. them, getting out and get some exercise. Mm -hmm. Nice and crisp, not too hot. Last weekend, it was brutal. Yeah, it was, yeah. you know, hot, humid, none of that. Very fall-like feel here has returned. Love it. It's good stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and more of that to come, I think. Uh, in fact, we may be a little bit cooler tomorrow morning oh, yeah? compared to where we're at right now. Wouldn't okay. be shocked to see a few 30s. We're going to talk all about that coming up. Wow. A member of the president's cabinet is stepping down amid a scandal over the use of private planes. Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price officially resigned from the position yesterday. The announcement came shortly after President Trump told reporters Price's future was being weighed. The inspector general is looking into Price using private jets for multiple government business trips. The president reportedly called the secretary's actions, quote, stupid. Price blasted former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi for similar decisions back when he was a congressman. Here's what he said seven years ago. I want to say to the speaker, don't you fly over our country in your luxury jet and lecture us on what it means to be an American. Don't you tell us about America. It's estimated Price used more than a million dollars of taxpayer money on the flights. The mayor of San Juan, Puerto Rico, is making a plea for help. Carmen Cruz says her people are dying after Hurricane Maria devastated the island. More than half of the island's hospitals are now open. They're being powered by generators or diesel fuel. Puerto Rican officials say people still need food, water, and medicine. Last night, Mayor Cruz made a plea to the U.S. It, it is really a good news story in terms of our ability to, to reach people and the limited number of deaths that have taken place in such a devastating hurricane. 
Now on Daybreak, an Indianapolis lawyer faces charges after he's accused of exposing himself to high school girls. Another day of near record heat. Marcus Bailey has what you can expect for the weekend ahead in his certified most accurate forecast. It is great to be back home again. That's Vice President Mike Pence, home in Indiana, talking tax reform and the health care plan. Now on Daybreak, hear from him and the senator he's wanting to work with. We do start with breaking news from overnight. Fire destroyed a business on the southwest side of Indianapolis. Crews responded to the corner of Chase Street and Troy Avenue around 3.30 this morning. That's near the intersection of South Harding Street and West Troy Avenue. Fire officials believe the fire started in the service garage of KW Auto Sales and Service. Three people and a dog were evacuated from a nearby home. No injuries have been reported. The fire did take out some power lines in the air and spread to a couple cars at the business. Firefighters do not know what sparked the fire. Investigators estimate there's $400,000 worth of damage. Let's get to the rest of the day for you on this Saturday, September 23rd. Hope it's the start of a great one. It's the start of a, another hot one. Marcus Bailey has our first forecast. Good morning, friend. The dog days of fall are officially <laughs> here. Right? In Crime Watch 8, an Indianapolis lawyer is facing charges after police say he exposed himself to high school girls on the interstate. One of the victims snapped this picture of Raymond Fairchild. Court documents say he pulled up next to a school bus from Norwell High School while on I-70. Girls told police the man exposed himself before pulling off the interstate. There, this was a basketball team headed to Plainfield for a tournament. A coach posted the photo on Facebook in the hopes of finding the flasher. That's a very difficult situation for innocent, naive girls uh, to go through. Um, and as their basketball coach, I couldn't be more proud of how they handled that with courage and total honesty. Detectives say a couple identified the man as Raymond Fairchild. He now faces four counts of public indecency and two counts of public nudity, all misdemeanors. Also in Crime Watch 8, police in Indianapolis are searching for a man accused of sexually assaulting a young teenager as the girl waited for her school bus. The victim is 13 years old. She told officers a man she did not know approached her yesterday on 38th Street near Arlington Avenue. She said the man forced her to a nearby spot. Police say he took off after the attack. Investigators are taking anonymous tips through Crime Stoppers. Indiana needs this tax cut. Hardworking Hoosiers need this tax cut. So, Joe, let's decide today. We're going to get this tax cut done, and we're going to get it done together. Vice President Mike Pence traveled back to Indiana to push tax reform. He spoke Friday at Anderson University. The vice president said the government can change taxes to better the American people. He spoke on reforms like a simpler tax code and business friendly tax cuts to create jobs. He then called out Democratic Senator Joe Donnelly, as you heard, to support the tax reform. Our coverage of the vice president's visit continues right now online. There you can see his entire speech.